Oh, y'all got nothing to say now. Shalom, Mabuhai, and welcome. Earlier this week, I read the account of how Joseph's brothers ended up fulfilling a dream that Joseph had when he was much younger. When Joseph was a teenager, he had a dream. Actually, it was two dreams with the same interpretation. And that interpretation was his older brothers would end up bowing down before him, and actually his mother and father as well. Well, of course, as you can imagine, that didn't sit too well with Joseph's older brothers. You see, Joseph, for lack of a better word, was daddy's favorite. He was the second youngest of 12 brothers, so right away, he was going to get more spoiled than he should be. Let's face it, the older children always get the brunt of the discipline from the parents. Can I get an amen? Secondly, he was the firstborn son of Rachel. Now, if you'll recall, Rachel was the wife that Jacob really loved. Unfortunately, Rachel died giving birth to Benjamin, Joseph's younger brother. So when Jacob looked at his son Joseph, he remembered his beloved wife, who was now gone. So of course Joseph would have an extra special meaning for him. And all this to say that Joseph was more favored than any of his brothers. And his brothers knew it. And to make matters worse, his father Jacob gave his son Joseph the amazing Technicolor dream coat. You know, the coat of many colors. And that really might not sound like very much to 20th, 21st century Western civilization, uh, but back then, that was a pretty big deal. It was pretty much an outward symbol, screaming out, yes, this kid is my favorite. And as you can imagine, his brothers resented Joseph for being that favorite son. Unfortunately, Joseph actually made things worse by telling his brothers, hey, I had a dream that you're going to bow down to me someday. Word to the wise, if God gives you a dream like that, just kind of keep that to yourself. You know, don't, don't go blurting it out all over the place. It's generally not going to go well for you. Well, one day the older brothers were out in the countryside tending their father's sheep in the hot weather, the hot, dry summer. And Joseph, who got to stay at home, remember he was the favorite, Joseph was sent by his father Jacob to check up on his older brothers and to bring back a report. Now, if you remember the account, Joseph had already previously gave his father a bad report about his brothers the last time that Joseph was sent to check on them. Now, we don't know what his brothers were up to at that time, but we know it wasn't good. And Joseph's tattling got them in trouble. So now the brothers really don't like this kid. And now here he comes again, the golden child, the guy we are supposed to bow down to someday. Well, they hatched a plan to get rid of that dreamer once and for all. They threw him down a dry well and intended to leave him there to die. But then they saw a caravan heading for Egypt. And being as magnanimous as they were, Joseph's older brothers spared his life and sold him to the caravan as a slave for 20 pieces of silver. That's just two pieces each. They covered up what they did by putting animal blood on Joseph's coat and telling their father that, oh, Joseph must have been killed by a wild animal or something. This is his coat, right? That you made for him? Yeah, that's, that's really sad. And then Joseph's brothers pretty much forgot about him. They were probably relieved that he was gone and they were never 
going to bow down to him. But if you recall the account, they were wrong. In the intervening years, God caused Joseph to prosper in Egypt. So much so that eventually he became second only to Pharaoh. He achieved an extremely high position. And then a famine struck the entire area and Joseph's older brothers were going hungry. They heard that there was food in Egypt, so they headed there to humbly beg for some grain for themselves and their father Jacob. And the man to see about getting some grain, guess what, was Joseph. Now his brothers did not recognize him. He was going by his Egyptian name at the time. And no doubt he was dressed very differently. They certainly didn't expect Joseph to be second only to Pharaoh. But his older brothers came down to him and bowed down before him to get some food. The brothers were fulfilling that dream and they didn't even realize it. But here's the thing. Joseph didn't reveal himself to his brothers. They didn't tell, he didn't tell them who he was. Instead, he wanted to test them. Were these the same people who endangered his life by selling him out for 20 pieces of silver? Or were they changed men? In other words, did they learn anything? So here's what Joseph did. He behaved harshly against his brothers. He insisted that one of them stay behind in prison until the brothers could return with the youngest brother, Benjamin. And furthermore, he secretly ordered each of his brother's money that they had brought to purchase the grain to be put back into their saddlebags in addition to the grain that they had bought. Joseph sent his older brothers on their way back home. Now, let's look at this picture for a second. The brothers are returning home, minus one brother, Simeon, and they've been enriched by getting their money back. They essentially got this valuable, valuable grain for free. Does that scenario sound familiar? Well, it should, because they did that before. When they sold Joseph to the caravan so many years ago, they went home, one brother short, with money in their pocket. And they were okay with it. Now it's happening again. They're returning home, one brother short, with free grain in their bags. Will they still be okay with it? Joseph was testing his brothers. Were they the same men who sold him into slavery? Or had they repented? As it turned out, they had. God had shown them the error of their ways by putting them in exactly the same situation as they were in before. Except now, they were not enjoying it as much as they had the first time. They said to each other, we are going through this because of what we did to Joseph. They were, were lamenting their past sins. They had become different men. And now instead of being happy to leave a brother behind like they did with Joseph, now they were intent on getting their brother back. They didn't care that they got their money back. In fact, that made them feel Worse, it didn't make them feel better. Now, the only way Jacob's sons would get Simeon back is if they brought that youngest brother, Benjamin, with them to Egypt. Now, Benjamin was born as his beloved mother died. Jacob sent ten of his sons to Egypt to buy grain, but he kept Benjamin at home, just like he did with Joseph. The death of his beloved wife, Rachel, was crushing to Jacob. And the apparent death 
of his favorite son from Rachel nearly killed him. He was not going to lose his youngest son, the last son of Rachel. But it was the only way to get more food. And it was the only way to get Simeon back. Benjamin had to go. But now instead of being content to leave family behind, Reuben is now offering the lives of his own children if anything happened to Benjamin. Judah offered to take the blame and to personally guarantee Benjamin's safety to his father Jacob. That is quite an attitude change, if you ask me. The brothers went back to Egypt with Benjamin in tow, and they took twice as much money as before because they wanted to reimburse what they thought was a billing error. In addition to that, they also took gifts for Pharaoh's second-in-command. But Joseph wasn't done testing his brothers. He's, he's going to turn up that heat a little bit more. He prepared a feast for the brothers. Everyone got the same portion of food except the youngest. Except for Benjamin. Joseph gave the youngest brother five times as much food as everyone else. You seeing something similar here? That was an outward signal to the brothers that just screamed, Yes, this youngest brother among you is my favorite, and I'm showing it openly. Oh, y'all got nothing to say now. Again, the brothers were in the same position they were in before. The younger was clearly being favored over the older. Were they going to resent it, like they did before with Joseph? Were they going to complain? <laughs> they didn't. They dared not raise a fuss. They had changed. But Joseph wasn't done yet. He's going to turn that heat up even more. A little more difficult test. Had they really changed? This time, Joseph ordered the money to be put back into the brothers' saddlebags, just like last time. Plus, he ordered his special silver cup to be placed in Benjamin's saddlebag. He was going to frame Benjamin and see how his brothers responded. After the brothers left, Joseph gave him a good head start before sending out his assistant to accuse the brothers of the theft. Now, since all this was done to them in secret, all of the brothers naturally denied it. They didn't know anything about it. But when Joseph's assistant searched the brothers' saddlebags and found Joseph's silver cup with Benjamin, he was going to bring Benjamin back with him to face the consequences. Now the brothers had a choice to make. Do they save their own skin? Do they leave a brother behind and return home with their grain? Or are they going to bring their brother back? Now, they could have left him behind. Looking at the evidence based on what they knew, they could have been resentful over how Benjamin was honored and said, well, Benjamin must have stolen that cup when we weren't looking. Oh, well, shouldn't have done that. Let Benjamin go back and face the consequences. He's clearly guilty. I mean, hey, at least Benjamin won't starve to death in Egypt, right? Mr. Five times as much food. Little big shot. But the brothers didn't do that. Even though they didn't have to, they went back with Benjamin. All the brothers went back with Benjamin, and they all said to Joseph, No, we will not let our brother go. We would rather all be your slaves than abandon our brother. And that is when Joseph knew his brothers had changed. 
and we know the rest of the story. Joseph reveals himself to his brothers. He forgives them and blesses them and their families. And Joseph says to them, come live with me here in the best part of Egypt where there is plenty of food. Now in the same way, maybe, maybe Jesus is testing you. Maybe you are finding yourself in an identical situation as you were before. Maybe you are being faced with the same decision. Are you going to throw someone under the bus, get your money, and be on your way? Or are you willing to sacrifice to help someone else? Have you repented? Have you changed? Remember that Jacob's brothers repented. They changed. And in the end, their family was reunited. And they were blessed by the one that they had mistreated. If you find yourself in that position, can I urge you to make the right choice so that your Heavenly Father can bless you and your family. Thank you all for watching. God bless.